top of concrete here different than what it's shown on this drawing. So we'll get that back out of the road. But um, so what I ended up doing is I ended up this the way I set this uh, project up is uh, I had um, folders and um, what I had is common components and then I had the actual components that were for the specific project and then purchase parts and in there I have hardware and then parts and they they the stair treads actually a purchase part so that's kind of how I set up the hierarchy as far as folders go each set of stairs was on a specific page of the project and uh, I will probably gray all this out because I want to protect the customer but um, each of the folders corresponds to um, one of the stairs that I had to do or a, or a vertical set of stairs or a platform or whatever so I <clears throat> just tried to keep everything as organized as possible um, this particular job was on page 30-S, which is, I believe, structural, and then dash 05. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. I tried to make it as parametric as possible. So I think what we'll first do is we'll take a look at just the tread. And um, I, I contacted the manufacturer of the tread. I, first, I contacted my customer, and they gave me the name of the manufacturer. And I actually got um, 2D PDFs of the stair tread and interpolated how they were made. Um, the stair treads are not made with this a toe kick. Those are added. And so what I did is, um, and I don't have one here, but in a later project, I also made these into a blob, meaning that um, I actually made this just a solid piece with the back. And that's, if you're in, uh, it was a very large project, and I just did the stairs. Had I been in charge of the whole project, it would have been a massive SolidWorks file. And so you don't want this sort of detail in your top-level file. So I made these stair treads, no, not knowing if I was going to get more of the job. I made them as a blob so that um, in the large, you could call it large assembly mode, I could change them over, and they would be a very simple object. Um, you can see that in the uh, configurations, I've got 28 by 11, 28 by 12, 29 by 11 and 12, 32 by 11 and 12, and 36 by 11 and 12. And those are my different stair tread widths. And the reason that there's an inch off of one of them is if we go back to the top view here, the last tread is trimmed off. It's actually cut back. So um, because these overlap by an inch, these are actually 11. There's nothing for this to overlap underneath because this is a concrete landing. So the last tread is short. Um, so we'll go ahead. We'll go back to the risers or the stair treads, excuse me. And... Um, I can just step, probably step through this would be the easiest thing. So I created a weldment and my first sketch is the actual stair tread and it's 12 and an eighth by 29. And then um, I just made one of the sides and started working off of one side, uh, chamfered it, dropped my holes in. And I verified all this information. They actually take 7 16 bolts. They can also be welded on. Uh, and I added, I did this in an older version of SolidWorks. So the slots, uh, they don't, they didn't have slots at the time for Full Wizard. Um, and then I mirrored it over across my center line. And then this is a piece of angle iron that they use for this nose of the stair tread. Um, I went ahead and put the uh, grooving in it for the tread groove. Actually, you can see it on this side better.